what it is what's happening welcome back to the channel today's video is just a tiny little bit of a rant about something uh earlier today i usually don't comment on post on facebook much because there's just so many knuckleheads on there and there's so many keyboard mechanics on there that just talk out their ass and don't even know what they're talking about so today a guy posted asked a question it was on one of my toyota groups he asked a question about a lift kit problem he had on his little toyota well if some of you guys know me personally know i owned a full dry shop through the 90s and the early 2000s and this is what I built and then I built installed a lot of just off the shelf lift kits I, I if I had to guess I couldn't even guess I really don't even know I did so many lift kits I actually did lift kits for other shops because I was known in my area for this kind of stuff that's what I was I did that's what I focused on and I did it for many years so I would consider myself a uh, professional in this so the guy, I read through a bunch of the comments, and there was a couple comments that, that were legit answers, you know, what the guy was asking, of course, and then there was the one that stuck out that just irked my nerves. The guy installed a 5.5 Rough Country lift on his Toyota, which is the same lift I got on the Toyota, Toyota 4Runner down there, which we'll walk down there in a second. And uh, this guy's comment was, well, there's your problem, it's junk. Come on, man, really? Back when I was in business, when guys ask me they want to install a lift, first first two things I ask them is, what size wheel and tire you want, and what do you plan to do with the truck? 90% of the trucks that we lifted, Broncos, Toyotas, uh, Rangers, Nissans, I mean, you name it, I lifted it. And 90% of this stuff, guys were daily driving it, because most of the trucks were new. So guys were daily driving this stuff every single day. So I said, well, you know, you want to stay with a 33, 35, because after that, you really got to think about re-gearing it. If it's a Jeep, you're going to definitely have to put gears in if it's more than 33s, you know, all that kind of, just all that normal stuff. You know, and of course, it just keeps going up the more you want to do. Most of the stuff was, you know, daily driver stuff. Most of the stuff I did was 33s, 35s. So over the years, I've seen many, 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 many lift kits. You name it. You name all the brands. I remember one time we had in the shop two Broncos and an F-150. Now, I was doing these trucks back when they were brand new. So we had a, I remember we had a, a they were 96 trucks. These were, these were like a year old truck, if that. Um, we had a, if memory serves me right, I want to say one of them was a super lift. One of them was a, um, maybe a Skyjack or something. But I remember we had them on the floor. I remember me and my guy standing there looking at them going, man. These brackets all look the same other than one's red, one's black. There was a company, Warren, Warren Winches used to have, I believe it was Black Diamond. Their stuff looked identical to Rough Country stuff. Um, Skyjacker stuff. Um, of course, you had Rough Country. Trailmaster. All that stuff looked the same. The only thing I remember was uh, maybe it was Skyjacker or Superlift. One of those two. On the Fords, a radius arm drop bracket. One of those companies that was a it was a cast iron piece where everybody else was like a fabricated steel piece, and then but later I remember later on as the years went on that cast piece kind of disappeared and it went to a fabricated steel piece. So my point is most of the stuff, as far as I'm going to guess, most of the stuff's probably made by the same place, and it's sold to whoever. But this guy jumps on there and says it's junk, and I said why is it junk? Well, I I got it. First thing I got was the shocks were all all dented up. And then the bump stops, I put them on, and they were all, I bent them all up, and the dry shaft rubbed the gas tank. All right, so let's stop right there. Shocks dented up. That's not the company's fault. That's a shipping issue. They obviously got thrown around somewhere in a warehouse. And I guarantee you, because I've been dealing with these companies long enough, you pick the phone up and tell them it's dented, send them back, they'll send you another set. Or if you bought it from a local supplier, they'll take it back. It's not a big deal. Happens all the time. We used to get boxes and hardware would be missing and there'd be a bracket missing. I'd pick the phone up and they'd overnight the stuff. I mean, it's a headache, it's a pain, but we'd always get the stuff. It was never an issue. And I said to the guy, how did you bend the bump stops? Now the bump stop is nothing more than take a piece of box tubing and slice a piece off. Drill a hole, drill a hole. That's all this bump stop's made out of. And it lowers the rubber, rubber bump stop. That's all it is. Well, I was catching four feet of air. 
come on, dude, really? They're not designed for that. You're not the Duke's Hazard. I, I, you know, you build something like this. This is all sprung. This is Dana 60. This was built, purpose built. When you're buying an off-the-shelf lift kit, it's not for, meant for you to go play Dukes of Hazard out in the woods. I, I just, you know, the, the logic in some of these people is just unbelievable. So I just commented and said, you know, you either got wrong offset or the alignment isn't right. And he says, well, I haven't had the alignment done. I said, well, there we go. On a Toyota, it's independent front suspension. So you got control arms, upper lower control arms. And when you lift those trucks, you bring everything down, except for the upper control arms. They stay in this factory spot. So somewhere in that area, it all needs to be lined up. Let's take a walk down and look at my truck. As you can see, it's not lifted crazy. It don't have anything crazy on it. I'm running a 33, 12, 50, 15 on a 10 inch wide aluminum wheel. They're not my favorite wheels, but I had them. So save money, just use what you have. But as you can see, you bring down everything. All this gets dropped down. You got adjustment right there and you got adjustment right there more than likely all that stuff is out of whack and what his problem was is his upper if you can see there the upper control arm is rubbing the tire so something is out of alignment now this thing's running the rough country lift it's been on there since 2017 now i haven't put a whole lot of miles on this little truck but i haven't had an issue now, what that guy was talking about, his dry shaft hitting, I have no idea. Because in the back of this truck, all you have is a lift block and an ad leaf. That is it. So he's got to have something out of whack. Because look how far away that dry shaft is from the gas tank. So I don't know what that guy was talking about. But that's why I learned to just stop commenting. It ain't worth my time. It ain't worth my aggravation. But it just kind of struck a nerve with me today. I don't know why even. I don't even know why I even care, really, honestly. As I'm making this video, I kind of really just don't even care anymore. If the guy gets it fixed, he gets it fixed. Not really hurting me, but just kind of for some reason, I don't know. Maybe I was in a pissy mood earlier. But, you know, the guy tells me he was jumping the truck. Well, gee, no wonder it didn't hold up. It's not meant for that. Of course, there was a bunch of other people. Oh, solid axle swap and do this, do that. Not everybody has the resources to do that. That's why they do these bolt-on lift kits. The guy's probably working in a small, you know, home garage in his driveway. He's got limited tools, skills, whatever. I'm not picking on the guy. I'm just explaining. Not everybody can have a shop, roll back, tow trucks, lift, welder, plasma cutters. Not everybody can have all that stuff. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with the bolt-on stuff. It works, but you got to also remember... It's only designed to do so much. It's not meant for you to play Dukes of Hazard in uh, Fall Guy and try to jump the thing. And if you actually ever watch the Fall Guy, when that truck would land, it always broke the front axle. So that truck wasn't even built for that either. So maybe you guys got something out of it. Who knows? But, uh, you know, catch me on the next one. I'll do something else because today was just kind of like a little bit of a rant. Holla at your boy. Keep it real.